So welcome to this video. Uh, today I want to talk about sharpening images, uh, so sharpening your photographs. Uh, so before I get into the practicalities of sharpening and looking at the different processes that you can use in Photoshop to add sharpening, I want to talk about when you should do sharpening because that is just as important as how you sharpen your image. So when should you do sharpening to your photographs? And the answer to that is, is it should be one of the very last, if not the last thing that you do. Because when you're preparing your photographs, you may be preparing them for different output methods. So you might be preparing the image you're working on for a screen presentation, for putting on the web, putting it onto social media, or you might be preparing it for printing, for an exhibition, or to go to a book or something like this. And where it's going to will depend, will affect the way you sharpen the image. So for instance, if you're preparing it to go to screen, social media, a website, etc., then you will need to add less sharpening because the likelihood is, is that if it's going to screen like social media, then it will have less pixels in it. And the less pixels in the image, then the less sharpening it will require. If you sharpen your image as part of your editing and then you reduce it for screen consumption or you, you, you then have to increase it for printing, if you've added the sharpening, it's going to affect the quality of your image. It's going to cause possibly jagged edges, maybe JPEG artifacts and so on. So you want to always do sharpening after you've decided where the image is going. So you reduce the size of it for screen uh, if you're looking for a guide, for instance, what size is, so if you're uploading something to social media, I would always recommend sizing it to the correct size for that platform that you're going to upload it to. So it's a good idea to check the web for what size the image should be. So for instance, this is from socialpilot.co and it's a guide to Facebook, Twitter, so social media platforms and the images the size images should be in pixels and you should size your image before uploading it because the less processing that needs to be done on the server, it will retain the more quality for your image. Normally what happens is your image is uploaded and the service or platform that you're uploading it to will, will, will process it further. So for instance, if the color profile is wrong, if the size is wrong, it's going to resize it for you or it's going to add a new color profile for you. But you should have done all those things before you upload it. So it's a good idea to check, check it out, size it before you upload it. Uh, and then once you've sized it, so back to Photoshop, once you've sized it, then you can add your sharpening because then you know what size it's going to be and you're not going to over sharpen it if it's in a bigger size and then resize it. Same thing goes for print. So if you're going to get something printed, you need to think about, well, what print process am I using? Is it going to a book? Is it going to a print uh, on the wall in a frame? How large is that print going to be? What type of paper am I printing it on? So all of these will affect your sharpening. I have another video on specifically aimed at printing, which also talks about uh, in more detail about sharpening for print and different media. So I'll put a link to that at the bottom and you can check that out. But in general terms, yeah, the last thing you should do is sharpening. After resizing your image for whatever output it's going to, then, then you can add your sharpening. So we're just going to look at sharpening in general terms today. I'm not going to talk about uh, any more about those different types of processes. So first of all, I'm going to look at a landscape image and then we're going to look at a portrait image because the way you sharpen for each of them will be slightly different. So first of all, looking at this landscape image, this image was shot at ISO 800. So if I zoom in, you can see it does have some grain in it. Uh, so, uh, so we have to be wary of that also because sharpening may also uh, increase uh, the the noticeability, how much I notice the, the grain in the image. So I'm going to look at a few different methods of sharpening. So we use the filter menu. So generally what I do is, is I convert for smart filters. That will ensure it's a non-destructive change in Photoshop. 
So once I've converted it to a smart filter, you can see here on the right hand side in the layer panel, it's now a smart, it's converted for smart filters. And then I can go to filter. So underneath the sharpen menu, we have unsharp mask, which is very much the traditional way that's been used for sharpening images. So if I click on that and we look at the dialog box, it gives us a hundred percent view here. It's also recommended that you obviously select a part of the image that can be important, a part of the image that is in focus when you're doing your sharpening. Uh, you can also zoom in. So if I take my image here and I zoom in, I'm doing control one or command one on the Mac to zoom into the image hundred percent. So I can see the effect my sharpening's having. If I'm at uh, this view where the whole image fits into the screen, I'm currently at, it's about 19%. Uh, I'm not viewing the whole image. I'm not going to see the full effect of the sharpening. So that's why I want to zoom into hundred percent. So you can see here the effect of the sharpening. If I uncheck preview and turn it off, I can see what effect it's having. So here you have your settings, your amount, you have your radius and your threshold. So the radius and amount will affect the quality of the sharpening, whereas the threshold will dial back the sharpening uh, a small amount. So if you want, this is a, a basic, a very simple, straightforward way to, to sharpen your image. I can click on OK and now you can see this is stored in a smart filter. I can come back in anytime I want and adjust my settings. Okay, so it's a non-destructive change. So I'm just going to uh, undo that. If we go back to where it was converted to a smart filter and we now go to filter back to sharp and then we can look at the smart sharpen. So this is another way of sharpening. So you, you have very uh, similar options to your, to your uh, unsharp mask at the top here. You have a choice of removing lens blur, Gaussian blur or motion blur. So I'm going to leave it on lens blur. You can try and remove motion blur. So motion blur might be something that you're, you had some camera shake when you were taking the photograph and you want to remove that type of blur or you might want to remove motion blur off something in the image, for instance, which of course would be a selective type of sharpening. Because uh, you can also through, choose the direction here. So if you choose motion blur, you can actually change the direction to tell it what direction the motion was going in. Uh, but we're going to leave it on lens blur for this. So in this adjustment, you can also sharpen independently in the shadows and the highlights. So you can fade the sharpening as it moves into the highlights or moves into the shadows. Just moving back up here, we have our amount. So that's the amount of sharpening, the radius. So these are similar to unsharp mask. And then we have reduced noise, which is similar to threshold, but not the same. So you can see that when I'm adding the sharpening here, if I move preview, it is making the grain much more noticeable. So you, you can try and increase this to reduce that noise. It doesn't do such a great job here, but I find it's highlighting my noise, the noise I have in this image very much using the smart sharpening. So I might want to avoid that. So if I hit on cancel, uh, I go back to filter and then I go to my sharpen and unsharp mask. And I can kind of see here, it's doing a kind of similar thing. It will, it will so sharpening will affect uh, the grain. For me, at least the unsharp mask doesn't make it look as bad. Uh, so I might use unsharp mask for that reason with this particular image. The other way of sharpening your image is through using the high pass filter, but this needs to be done slightly different. So if I go back to my history and I go back to the beginning, so for this, I need to create a second layer. I need to create a copy of my background layer. So I come down here, drag it to the new layer icon to make a copy of my background. I'm again going to go to filters and convert for smart filters because I want this adjustment to be non-destructive. And I go back to filter and I go back to other and now I go to high pass. So I get my high pass window. You get this quite odd look here. Uh, the radius amount will uh, this number will change depending on the size of your image. So the smaller your image is in pixels, 
the smaller the radius can be. The higher the resolution, the higher this radius can be. So I'm going to leave it at 7 for this. Click on OK. And because I'm using this top layer here, I need to blend it with the background layer. So I'm going to hit on Overlay. And if I do before and after, so you can see the adjustment. So I found that high pass filters can be quite ideal for landscape images, for instance. And it works well for in some particular images and other images it doesn't work well. Uh, so you just have to experiment, try it out. It might be a case of trial and error. If you want to reduce the strength of this, so it's, you don't have the same options as with Unsharp or Smart Sharpen, uh, but you can do that by just reducing the opacity. And that will then reduce reduce the, the strength of the sharpen. So we can see before and after. When you're adding, adding sharpening, it should be subtle. It should not be noticeable. So if someone looks at your image, they should not know that you have... Uh, it should not be explicit that you've added sharpening to the image. It should look sharp, but it shouldn't be obvious that sharpen, sharpening was added. If you add too much sharpening, you will end up getting artifacts in the image, and it, it normally doesn't look very good. So, so these are the ways of doing it with uh, with this type of image, with a landscape image. Uh, if you're talking about portrait images, our approach might be slightly different. So I have the second image, which is a stock image from Adobe Stock, of a portrait. So if I'm adding sharpening to this, so I zoom into 100%. So you, there's normally parts of a portrait that you want sharp and parts that you don't necessarily want sharp. So you, you normally want to perhaps sharpen the eyes, uh, but you don't want to sharpen the skin. So you're going to have an, to add a selective type of sharpening. So if we're doing that through, if I go to my filter and uh, convert for smart filters, and go back to filter, and then I'm just going to add the, the basic unsharp mask. Uh, sometimes in cases like this, I might just, I might over sharpen it. So I'm sharpening the whole image. Uh, so I'm going to change this to let's see, about 170. So it's, it is over sharpened now. You can see that. I can see where the highlights are hitting the shadows. You can start seeing these artifacts appearing. But that's okay because we're not going to use it as is. So if I turn this on and off, so we see before and after, you can see we've sharpened the whole image, including the skin. I don't want the skin any sharper than it was in the in, in the previous image. It, it can also sharpening can also increase the contrast of an image, so it can increase the contrast between the highlights and the shadows, make them harder. So that might be something that you want to avoid too. So next thing I'm just going to do is is I'm going to use the mask. So when you have a smart filter and you add a filter to to that layer, you get a mask with it. So I can invert this mask, so using Control i I can turn this to a black. So now everything is masked out. We can't see any of the sharpening. I can grab my brush tool, hit B on the keyboard. Uh, at the moment I'm at a 100% opacity, my flow is at 100%, so I might just reduce my flow down to about, let's go to about 20% for flow. And I think this is kind of, this brush size is okay, but I can make it maybe a little bit smaller. And we have a soft edge brush. I need to make sure I have my mask selected, which it is. You can see that it's selected with these little four corners around it. And my color is white. So I'm going to hit X to change my background color to my foreground color. So now my foreground color is white. And then you can start just click and hold and painting over the eye area just to add the sharpening. So we've added 20% of our sharpening there. So now if I turn this adjustment on and off, you can see the sharpening that has been added to the eyes. Not so obvious, but it is sharper and we're not affecting then the rest of the image. If you want to add sharpening to other parts of the image, you can do so. So make sure I have my smart uh, filter mask selected. Maybe now I want to reduce the flow to, to 10. And you can add then further further sharpening if you want to add sharpening to the lips or any other 
any other areas of the image. So you can see I over sharpened it in the first place, but when I brought it back, I only brought back it, I brought it back it as a small percentage of, of the previous sharpening. So if we turn it on and off, we have a very, what should be a, a subtle enough sharpening on the image. And of course, again, being very important that you're zoomed into 100% while you're making these adjustments so you can see the effect of your sharpening. So that's all for today. If you have any questions about sharpening, uh, feel free to ask them in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, like it. And if you enjoy the content that's on this channel, uh, then hit the subscribe button at the bottom. And thank you for watching.